Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. I'm gonna to give you a little bit of an overview of uh, Cernova and then we'll have some discussion questions. Uh, first of all, uh, Cernova is a public company and these are our, our forward-looking statements. We are on the Toronto Venture Exchange, we're on the OTCQB, and as we're moving forward, the plan is to move on to NASDAQ as our clinical programs advance. So uh, we have been working on what we consider the complete regenerative medicine uh, platform. So we have uh, what we call our cell pouch technology, which is a medical device that I'll talk about that is implantable in the body. And we have uh, a little bit of a different approach that's than other people that are using. Uh, for keeping these cells alive and functioning. Uh, we have therapeutic cells that we're working with, and then we're also working with uh, local immune protection inside of our device itself. Um, our two current uh, products that we're working on are two parent con uh, disease indications, are diabetes and hemophilia. In terms of our diabetes programs, uh, we have completed a small uh, first in human Canadian uh, study and we've learned an incredible amount about the implantation of the device, uh, survival of cells, quality of cells, and number of cells in that particular study. And that's enabled us to move forward and uh, prepare documentation for conducting a U.S. Uh, phase one, two study. And we've just gotten FDA clearance to uh, move that study into clinical trials and that uh, we're going to be enrolling patients uh, very shortly in that study and we're hoping to get uh, safety and by the end of this year in some of the patients uh, from that perspective and then moving on to efficacy. Um, and from our hemophilia programs, we have an autograph program that we're working on. We have received 5.6 million euros from the European Union and we're working with a consortium of investigators in uh, Europe to develop an autograph product. And here what we're doing is taking uh, a blood sample from the patient, we're isolating the endothelial cells, we're fixing the gene per factor eight, scaling those cells up. We're able to cryopreserve those cells and put those into the cell pouch where they release factor eight on a constant basis. So this product as it moves forward is gonna eliminate the need for patients to take these multiple infusions of factor eight. Uh, secondly, we're also working on an allograft product where we have a cell source that we've identified. Uh, we're gonna be putting the factor eight gene in that source and micro-encapsulating those uh, going into our, our cell pouch going forward. Um, in terms of our cell pouch technology, um, we've done many years of preclinical research, and, uh, and before that, I've done a lot of uh, work on uh, medical devices and what creates fibrosis in medical devices and how to prevent fibrosis. So we developed our cell pouch so that it actually forms the ideal environment for therapeutic cells, and we separated that from our local protection of the immune system, or protection of cells from the immune system. So when you look at our pouch, it's very, very porous. It allows uh, tissue and microvessels to be able to grow into the device around the removable plug. And then after several weeks, we can remove that plug and then we can insert the therapeutic cells. And the really important thing there is that those cells can then connect up to the blood supply and it can start to function. And so we kind of, we call it a mini organ in, in a sense, because those cells are sitting in a tissue matrix that are highly vascularized and they're able to produce insulin. Uh, with respect to the immune protection processes, um, what we're doing there is um, we're working with uh, micro-encapsulation technology and we have shown in our device that we can uh, provide efficacy with a micro-encapsulation and allograft product for over 200 days. So these are just a couple of um, slides and I'll be done in just a second, showing um, on the left-hand side, this is 12 weeks later, uh, with uh, fully functional eyelets in the device, chambers uh, that have been highly vascularized. On the right-hand side, you can see an actual eyelet that is uh, staining red for insulin, and there are large blood vessels that have come into the device that are feeding those eyelets. Um, furthermore, we can measure, or we can show that we're producing insulin, somatostatin, glucagon, et cetera, all of the uh, regulatory hormones to be able to control diabetes. And this is a slide from, an early slide from one of our patients in our initial clinical study, and again, it shows islets that are um, surviving, uh, producing insulin, and the green is showing that these islets are, are vascularized. 
Um, so with respect to our, uh, our clinical study that we're doing in the U.S., this is a phase one, two study, but we're very much focused on achieving efficacy in this study. Uh, we're looking at a, a marginal islet dose of highly purified islets, which we've shown in all of our preclinical studies to be successful from here on in. So we're very, very excited about uh, uh, moving forward with this study. Uh, very briefly, I just want to say that we are developing a number of products. We're working from the autograph perspective as well as the allograph perspective. And not only are we working on uh, human donor islets, we're using human donor islets to be able to test the proof of concept in humans. And once we show efficacy with real uh, islets from the pancreas, then that's going to lead us down the path of being able to work with our stem cell technologies, et cetera, as we're going forward. Uh, so these are our, our drivers. Our, we're focused on our FDA clinical trial this year. Um, we're also uh, working on our immune protected cells uh, with our stem cell technology. And furthermore, from the business development activity perspective, we're talking to multiple uh, large pharma companies and medical device companies and working forward uh, towards getting partnerships. So uh, we'll stop there. Stay there. So I guess as you're getting your seat, um, you know, maybe I'd love to know a little bit of whether or not you consider yourself a medical device company and an enabler of cell therapeutics, or, you know, are you more of a, of a hybrid that will, you know, kind of eventually have your own um, cells and medical device unit together? Yeah, so um, we're focused right now on combining both the cell pouch technology plus the local immune protection and the therapeutic cells. And um, from, from that perspective, uh, we're working on autograph cells. So for our hemophilia program, we're working on the patient's own cells that we're developing a process for to be able to isolate and prepare those cells to put into the cell pouch. So that makes us a fully functional uh, cell therapy company. Uh, from the allograft uh, perspective, uh, we're, we're working on, um, you know, for our hemophilia program, we're, we have our own source of cells that we're working with that we're microencapsulating. So therefore, we'll, we own that technology completely. And then from the allograft perspective, uh, we have a stem cell technology that we're working on encapsulating, but we're also looking at uh, potentially partnering with other pharma companies uh, to develop the best combination product out there. So it's a bit of a, a combination of the two. So, you know, stem cells, right, and cell therapies has really been viewed as the, in, in my view, you know, the holy grail of um, diabetes treatment, if we can do it. And I think that um, the Edmonton Protocol has pretty much showcased that. So, uh, you know, may, maybe you could explain a little bit about the Edmonton Protocol for those in the audience who might not know. But outside of that, I'm kind of curious, you know, what are, the, what are the challenges and the hurdles that that therapy is already, you know, sort of identified for you, and how does your cell pouch system specifically tackle that? Yeah, so as far as the Edmonton protocol, it's, it's really the first cell therapy uh, for diabetes that, that was developed over 10, 15 years ago. And basically that process involves uh, isolating don islets from donor organs and then, and then pouring them into the portal vein of the liver. And uh, the good thing about that is if you put enough cells in there, islet cells, uh, you can start to get function. Um, the difficult thing about that process are uh, a number fold. One is that you frequently have to use more than one organ donor to be able to get function because cells really don't belong in a blood vessel. They belong uh, with blood vessels surrounding them. Uh, the second thing is you get uh, massive inflammatory cells coming in and killing a lot of the islets. So you have, to, uh, you have a lot of islets that you have to put in. Um, and the third thing is, uh, it might be okay for just donor islets to put those cells in, but at the same time, you can't put stem cells into uh, the portal vein, because if you have a problem, you'll have now a liver transplant to have to deal with. So Cernovus technologies uh, are developed so that we can take those cells that become highly purified and we can put those in our device and we can show survival of those. And all of our preclinical studies have shown that we can use a marginal islet dose of cells, so we're looking at the potential of using a lot fewer cells that are normally used for the Edmonton protocol. And uh, secondly, what we also are able to do is take other cell technologies such as encapsulated stem cells and be able to put those in our device and, and move that forward from that perspective. Just, just so I understand, the device is um, subcutaneous, I mean, where do, you, where do you put that device? And, yeah. you know, I guess there, there are advantages to that in that 
if something went wrong, the device could just be taken out, but may, maybe you just talk a little bit of, of the details. Yeah, there. That's, that's a great question. So we have done um, studies in uh, non-human primates, putting the device in different portions of the body, such as in the leg in, or in the belly, in the shoulder, and we've done extensive uh, histology on that, on those studies, and we've shown that the pouch can be put virtually anywhere in the body and you get that highly vascularized environment. For our human trials, we're putting the device deep under the subcutaneous tissue and we find we get very significant uh, vascularization there and that's occurring around the waist. Um, people have been asking about what happens if uh, you get in a car accident or, or something like that, what happens to the pouch? And it has a real uh, structure to it. Uh, we've done our preclinical studies in pigs where they don't really care about the cell pouch and they have been rubbing their bellies uh, on the floor and doing all kinds of things and our device works well there and we get efficacy. So it's uh, very robust from that perspective. So it seems like this is a technology or a platform actually that's ripe for partnership. Um, yes. Can you talk a little bit about uh, are there partnering discussions going on? What's the tenor, tenor of, those, of those discussions? Yeah, so we uh, have been uh, developing uh, relationships with major pharma companies and a number of medical device companies. Uh, interestingly, when we, when we first started this work back in 2009, none of the pharma companies were interested in regenerative medicine. And what we're finding now is that most of the large pharma companies that are selling insulin also have uh, stem cell programs in the background. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to work with these uh, companies, and um, we are in discussions with a number of them uh, moving forward. So, so um, maybe just going back from a from a landscape perspective, you're not the only ones developing, right, a a device that can potentially harness the the potential of these cells. Um, matter of fact, uh, Viasite will be coming on afterwards. Um, there have been other companies, I guess, in the past that have tried to to do this as well. And so there's, you have, you're in a lot of company in trying to tackle this. <laughs> but, the, but the space is also big enough that multiple yeah. players can exist. But can you talk a little bit about maybe the learnings from the past and how you might sort of thread that, thread that needle going forward? Yeah, so there are a few things. With our first clinical study, um, it, what was going on is that we were being compared very closely to the Edmonton protocol. And one of the really important things there is that for a device, uh, it's a very different type of uh, process in terms of how the cells go in, the quality of the cells, the purity and all of that. So that's a, that's a really important thing to consider. Um, and uh, uh, moving forward from our um, clinical basis and, and looking at how we differentiate ourselves from other companies that are developing devices, we're finding that most of the companies are combining the immune protection within their device and itself. And we've taken the uh, opportunity to be able to separate that immune function from the device itself because we believe that you first have to create that highly vascularized environment and then you do local immune protection within a device and that's been successful for us so far. So where, whereas we, uh, from your other statement in terms of uh, the size of the population, when we combine uh, the type one diabetic patients and uh, the type 2 diabetic patients that go on to take insulin injections, uh, we see we're really uh, excited that there are a lot of companies, that are other companies working on the program because uh, we can all be successful. So, yeah. so in the last 10 seconds, um, if money wasn't an issue, partners were, were giving you the funding that you needed, when do you think um, this could potentially go through the, the, the appropriate regulatory steps to, to be on the market? Yeah, so uh, we have a number of, even in our diabetes program, we have a number of different uh, programs and we see uh, products coming out tiered over a period of time. And with our uh, donor islets for patients that have hypoglycemia on awareness, that's a, um, a orphan status market. So those um, islets are already, there's already a method for isolating those islets. And so what we're really doing is just putting them into the cell pouch and optimizing that. So if we're able to get efficacy in our study, then we can see that we would immediately expand the study um, and hopefully be able to be cleared within, uh, you know, three years or so from that perspective, if everything goes well. Um, we're also working on a uh, porcine encapsulated uh, product. We see that as the next product going forward because, again, those are coming from a clean herd of pigs. Uh, and the potential there, they're already fully functional islets, and then uh, down the line, the next step would be uh, stem cell-derived technologies. And right. that's for diabetes, and then our 
autographed um, hemophilia program, that's something that, would, that could also come out quite sooner because the autographed uh, programs are able to move faster along than the allografted ones are. Phil, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.